Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesse Williams of Anchor in the building. Hell yeah. Hi. Yes. First of all, thank you so much for joining. Uh, I know it's really late where you are, so we'll kind of do our best to to speed through some of the questions for you. For those that may not know you, Jesse, can you do me a favor and introduce yourself? Let me know whereabouts in the world you are. Plug and promote anything you'd like. Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Jesse Williams, singer in alternative metal band called Anchor. I'm in Spain. It's actually now 2 a.m. <laughs> in Spain, a bit late, um, but I'm very happy to be here. So thank you for having me, guys. We very much appreciate it. My co-host today is a guy named JB. Uh, he's going to be helping me out with this one. Hi. Uh, Jesse, uh, we're not super familiar with the band. We kind of got familiar in the last couple of months. Uh, people have been requesting Prisoner mm -hmm. and Oblivion. And those two songs are so different. How do you guys go about writing a song? And is there, what do you take into that song? Like, cause I noticed that uh, Oblivion has like a little bit of like a hip hop edge to it. Like, how do you, how do you guys mm -hmm. go about when you write a new song? Um, I think it depends a lot on, on how we're feeling and the influences we all have. We all listen to different music. We listen to loads of different types of music, which I think um, is quite important um, when it comes to writing. Um, we've always done like very different songs in our style. Like, I mean, a lot of people tell us, ah, they sound so different, but it still sounds like you guys. And so it still sounds like Anchor. That's something we've always done. Um, and I think it depends a bit how we're feeling we usually write sad songs, um, but we listen to hip hop, we listen to metal, we listen to pop. So I think the influence of all these different styles is what makes our songs different from from one another as well. So would you so you'd say like what you're playing right now could affect how the next single is written or, or are you pulling influences over your entire lifetime? Um, I think influences like they, they change a lot now for example um i'm so into k-pop for example which i think Me too. um oh nice good <laughs> i think that is influencing a lot as well um into writing at the moment but i think it depends a, a lot on on the just the moment um how we're feeling what what we're listening to at that moment but i think most of all the feelings definitely the feelings I, I totally get that um prisoner has kind of a, a serious emotional message and i know you said you kind of they're kind of sad songs but done in anchor way was that a particular hard mm -hmm. song to write for you from a lyrical perspective um i think all songs um are quite hard because as i said like normally all our songs are sad i always find it a lot easier to write sad songs and i, I don't know how to make happy music to be honest <laughs> um i would just vomit bad feelings or sad feelings they don't have to be bad feelings um all songs are very very emotional uh when it comes to prisoner and oblivion they're all part we've done something a bit new we hadn't done this before uh we thought of, of a whole story um prisoner being chapter two of this story then Oblivion being chapter three. And we followed and we've done the lyrics and the music thinking about this story. I can't say much more about the story because obviously like, we haven't released chapter one yet, but obviously chapter two, which is Prisoner, is about losing somebody. I find it quite funny because when people watch the video or listen to the song and they write comments, people, interpret the song in so many different ways which is something i love um some people think it's a heartbreak um like breaking up with somebody other people think it's dealing with a loss like someone you loved dying um and actually it can be any of those things to be honest in my case it would be about losing someone close to me um in the video, in Oblivion, for example, you can see as well, um, there's this moment with the pills. Um, so in the video, I take some pills and then wake up in the hospital. 
I, I haven't dealt with that myself. So not everything I write is about myself, but I have dealt with someone very close to me committing suicide. So it's all uh, things that we've lived, but it doesn't always have to be something that I have lived when I write the lyrics, but people close to me. It's, I'm going to make a comment and then I'm going to send it to JB for a question, but it's interesting that you guys are going backwards in the chapters. So I, so there's kind of a, a big explanation, I'm guessing, when we get chapter one. Um, yeah, I think like the reveal will be in chapter one as to what, why is everything happening in chapter two and three? Um, you'll get to know very, very soon. But yeah, we decided to do it a bit different, you know, a bit like Star Wars. Yeah, that's get cool. A bit interesting. Uh, uh, that is very cool. I like it. Uh, JB, what question do you have for uh, for Jesse? So my question is, after the two years of not performing uh, after the pandemic, um, if mm -hmm. so, what was the feeling of getting back on the stage? Um, how how was the feeling about getting back on stage? If you can elaborate about that uh, first performance being back from the pandemic. It was amazing, to be honest. Um, pandemic was hard. We had a very big tour in July 2020, which obviously was cancelled. We couldn't do, uh, which was a bummer. But then we were quite fortunate to be able to do a European tour in autumn 2021. Not a lot of Spanish bands um, could do it. So we were very grateful to be able to go out and perform. I have to say it was amazing. It was different because... It depended on the country, like depending on the country, some shows were with the crowd sitting down. Um, so people couldn't even stand up or get up from their chairs, which was tough. And it's quite that's quite tough at a, at a metal show, I have mm. to say. But it was an amazing experience. It was great to see everybody again. Um, and we enjoyed it so much. Of all of all the places that you've toured over over the years, is there one particular country that that you just have to go back and visit again? Maybe it just wasn't enough time on a day off to go sightseeing. What country was that? Uh, definitely 100% Japan. Um, we've played in Japan twice. We played the first time we did a tour in Japan. It was 2017. Second time was 2019. Uh, I have to say we saw a lot of Japan, but you never get enough of Japan. Like You always have to go back. We're in love with the country. It's, I think, our favorite country in the world. Not just mine, but the guys in the band as well. We all agree on that. We always have a great time in Japan. And honestly, like people in Japan at shows go nuts. It's I've amazing. Heard I've heard this before. So, yeah, Japan. Uh, we'll do a 100%. couple. And then country we haven't played that we really, really want to play is the U.S. Yes, 100%. please. Yes, please come to California. <laughs> Please. That's where that's where we're oh, located. <laughs> uh, when when you're I'd love to. awesome. When you're when you're prepping for a big big long tour, what are just a couple essentials that you have to have in your area of the bus, like in your bunk area? You have to have these essential tour items. Uh, definitely a bottle with water and a straw to do warm ups. So I always warm up with a straw. I think that is my essential. And then headphones. Always. I always have to listen to music, disconnect a bit before shows as well. Um, so I would say those two, a straw and a bottle of water and headphones. Do you, you said uh, for vocal warm up reasons, do you have any unusual techniques post show to like cool your throat down or anything strange that you do besides the, the bottled water to, to get prepared? Um, before the shows I do like, it's not unusual because if, if you see singers warm up, like I think all warm ups are unusual. Just the strangest sounds, cats and laughs and sirens doing anything you can think of. Um, and after the shows, I think the most important thing is to try and speak as less, like, like the least possible, which I always find very, very difficult. Because I always like, like when I go to like the merch area, start talking to everybody. And if there's music on, I shout a bit too much. So that's something that I have a very hard time uh, doing. And I find it very difficult, but it's what I should do. <laughs> but I still have to work on that. I'm sure your bandmates have answered this one in the past uh, prior to you joining. But is there a specific reason that Anchor is spelled the way it is? Actually, it's quite a funny story because I think they named the band 
it's not super original. I mean, they just thought they were 14, 15 years old. Um, they were thinking of names for the band and they wrote it somehow that it meant torture or something very weird. So they decided to change it. Um, and then anchor in in Swedish, I think it is. It means ducks, which is weird. It's ducks. not why they named it that way. I'm not really sure why they named it, why they wrote it with a K. But yes, in Swedish, I think, or in Finnish, it means ducks. So every time I look for the, the hashtag anchor on on Instagram, it's us and ducks all the time. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> if hilarious. you check it on Instagram, you'll see like, if you look for anchor, you'll find loads of ducks. <laughs> that is hilarious. Uh, when, <laughs> when, when you guys play a set, what song is the hardest in your catalog to perform for you personally? Mm. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, we haven't played the new songs that we haven't played Prisoner or Oblivion live yet. So I can't say those two. But I think if I had to say one of those two, it would be Oblivion for now, because um, I think it's the toughest, vocally speaking. It's it's quite a tough song. But from the old album, I would have to say Sail is a song that is quite difficult to sing but I, I really enjoy doing live. This is information I could not find on the internet. I try to do a little bit of research before I have a guest on, but when you joined in 2014, how did you find mm -hmm. Anchor or how did they find you? Okay, <laughs> I had, I played in another band before Anchor. I joined in, in 2010. It was like a more, it was metalcore as well. And Anchor called us to play in Barcelona, so we were the supporting band, and that's when I met them. After that show, uh, that we became friends instantly. Their singer told them she was leaving like a week after the show, so it was perfect timing, and they asked me if, if I wanted to join the band, which obviously I said yes, um, and joined the band like two weeks later. Oh so, yeah. yeah. It's kind of cool story. So you're already buddies with them. Yeah. So it worked out perfectly. Yeah. J JB, what's exactly. a, a, another question you have for Jesse? My question is, um, when you're on stage and you see, I, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, say if the crowd isn't um, fully into what you guys are doing, what is one tactic mm -hmm. you use to get them um, started pumped up again? What is your favorite thing to do? I think I would say for that, our guitar player, well, we have two guitar players, David and Fito. Um, Fito is the best in cheering people up. As soon as he opens his mouth, he says, it doesn't even matter what he says. Um, people go crazy when he starts speaking. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> so I think the perfect thing to do in that case is make Fito speak or jump or do anything <laughs> on stage. And it always works 100%. When can we expect chapter one? Are you allowed to tell us a rough ah, timetable of when yep. we can expect it? I can tell you the exact date. We already um, have a date for it, and it's the 7th of July. Oh, so, so it's coming. It's coming. Uh, yeah, next week. That's awesome. Next week. That's next week already. So, yeah. Excellent. Friday the 7th. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Chapter one. Finally. I, it's, Finally. I love the fact that you guys it's went oblivious. backwards, too. Um, it, yeah, if, Oblivion was released in February, so it's been a long time. Is that is that going to be the last single of 2023, or is there is there a chance we might squeeze in Chapter Zero? Maybe I don't know. There's going to be more. Uh, what I can tell you is that the story that we thought of has six chapters. Um, so now we're releasing Chapter One, and then I think we will do. I'm not sure, but I think we will do it in order. So four, four five, and six. The idea is to release all of them this year. So definitely there are more singles coming this year. Awesome. For sure. Jess, we only have a couple more for you. We know it's late. Uh, a lot of a lot of smaller artists watch the show as it is called local band smoke out. Um, can mm -hmm. you can you give us band advice for maybe somebody that's watching that that wants to do what you do, but that's it's kind of stuck in the local scene? What, what band advice, maybe mm -hmm. there's a mistake you made earlier in, in your career that you don't want them to make? Just any, any form of advice you could give. I think something that happens a lot is, is when a band releases an album or a single 
and they do a great job and they release a great song or a great album, they expect um, everything to happen on its own. So you release good music and you expect um, that's it, success. So festivals are going to call you. Um, you're going to have loads of shows and that's not how it works. You can release great music, um, but if you don't promote it, if you don't get people to see it, it's like it doesn't exist. So I think an important thing is to promote your music. Another important thing is, I know it's quite typical, but to not give up because there are good and bad times. Like Anchor has been going on for 20 years now. Obviously, I've been since 2014, but a lot of years um, and we've had our ups and downs not everything is always perfect. So I think the key to success, it sounds weird, but it's obsession with what you do. I love um, that. Enjoying what you do, working on 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 your band 24-7 and dedicating everything you've got. So obsession would be the key word for me. Without going like crazy, but <laughs> yeah, I think obsession is important. Sane <laughs> obsession somehow, somehow. Exactly, yes, yeah, sane obsession. I like that. I like that. Let's uh let's end on on a fun one. Uh, let's say for some particular reason, this show that you just played tonight was the best one ever. Hundred thousand plus people sold out merch in two minutes. Uh, everything you guys wanted. Now it's time to eat. Awesome. We're ending on a fun one. What is your favorite meal or munchy snack? Ah, pizza. Pizza. It's okay. Gotta, it's gotta be. It's got to be pizza. What do you put? What toppings do you put on your pizza? Lots of cheese, um, onion, and I don't know if in the states you do it, but here it's very typical to put olives, like green olives, on pizza. Okay. Uh, no, more like yeah. black olives is it, here. Is it weird? Yeah, I've not seen green olives. Like, so they they still have the pits and everything. Oh, that I've never seen. That is a first for me. I've never seen that. <laughs> but uh, all right, cool. So if, if we ever see you, we'll make sure <laughs> to get an onion, olive, extra cheese, pizza, head, and send it your nice. way. <laughs> Jesse, <Awesome. laughs> thank you so much for hanging and uh, answering some questions for you. We look forward to chapter one. Anchor is badass. Uh, safe travels. And please come to California and the rest of the state soon. Please. I hope so. Have thank an excellent day. Thank me. you very much. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Ladies and Thanks, gentlemen, guys. Jesse right. Williams, a yeah, hell yeah. 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 Yeah.